Sarah, oh, Sarah, we know it wasn't intentional, but honey, you recorded it. And now we're going to talk about it. Welcome to Dimwit Criminals. On February 25th of 2020, a 42-year-old Winter Park, Florida woman named Sarah Boone zipped her boyfriend, Jorge Torres Jr., up in a suitcase while they were playing hide-and-go-seek. Yes, apparently some adults play hide-and-go-seek when the kids aren't around. However, it appears that while they were playing games with each other, when things got a little bit scary for Jorge, Sarah got a little mean. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Fuck you. Now they were both intoxicated, obviously. Apparently, they did a lot of drinking together in the evenings, but we also believe that Jorge probably was not the best boyfriend in the world. So, obviously, Sarah thinks, okay, I'm going to teach this man a lesson. I've got him where I want him, and I'm going to make him squeam for a little bit. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> got this. Sarah. Regular Sarah. Ass. Well, so Sarah goes upstairs, lays in her bed, and goes to sleep. Whether she intended to go to sleep or not doesn't matter. The point was, she didn't go down and help him out of the suitcase until she got up the following day we suspect that she probably got up between 10-ish and noon. And eventually, once she got downstairs, realized, oh, holy heck, he's not breathing. So around 1 o'clock, Sarah calls the police. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 4748 France Court, apartment 3. 4748, what's the street name? France, F-R-A-N-T-D. And the apartment number? Three. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. Okay, send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. It's asking... Just a location of mercy. That's no, please don't leave. 4748 France Lane, apartment 3. France Court. France Court? Yes. Okay, is this near Mackenzie Drive? I don't know where that is. Okay, okay. It's Hillwood Park Apartments. Okay, 4748 France, correct? Correct. All right, great. Now, tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in a case when we were playing. And okay. Like, kind of hide-and-seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Right, okay, what's your apartment number? Three. Um, I apartment three? Yes, like, he has, like... Blood coming out of his mouth, and I don't know if, like, he had, like, an aneurysm on the like, what happened. Right, okay, all right, okay. Listen, we're getting help out there, too. All right, okay. Okay, I... I now? Okay, 40... Yeah, man, listen, we're on our way out there. You're at 407-716-8684. Okay, is he hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried the, giving him CPR. Out of the, okay, so he's, oh, he was in a suitcase? Yes, and I fell asleep. Okay, how old is the how old is the boyfriend, ma'am? Forty-two year old man. All right. 
Okay, where where is Sandy? Where is Sandy Hill? Do you share something away out there? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Listen to me. Okay. That. Um, that just, that just need to confirm this. One. All right. I understand. I just need to confirm this. Is he is he awake at all? Is he conscious at all? No. He's purple. Is he, right. Is he breathing? No. All right. I need you to get. I need you to get him on the floor, flat on his back for I me. Did. Okay. I did. I did. I tried giving him CPR. All right. I tried giving him CPR. Yeah, okay, well, well, we're... Well, well, nothing happened. He's purple. Right. Okay, listen to me. If there's a defibrillator, I need you to get it for me, okay? What is it? You have an AED, have an AED available? No. All right, do you write by him now? I'm sorry? You, are you right by him now? Yes. Okay, okay, lay him flat on his... Okay, ma'am, 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 listen. Uh, so, listen, is he cold and stiff? Yes. Okay. Well, he's okay. not necessarily cold, but he's stiff. And he's right, purple. okay. All right, listen to me. I, listen, listen to me. I want you to lay him flat on his back for me on I the did. floor. I did. Removing the pillows. Okay. Yes, I did. All right. Okay. With, He's stiff and purple. Right. Okay. Listen. Okay, man. That's fine. We're, we're still going to do compressions on him. Okay. All right. Place the heel of your hand on his breastbone, right in the center of the chest, right between the nipples. Yes. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Baby, I'm telling you. Just by okay. looking at him, you can tell. Okay. Ah! Please. Okay, he just gurgled. Okay, okay. L listen to me. All right. I want to play. I want you to place the heel of your hand. Uh -huh. Okay, right between the right between his chest, right between his breastbones. Yes. Put your other hand, put your other hand on top of that hand. Yes, we I want think. we want to pump his chest to me hard and fast. Going to do this twice per second. I'm doing it again. Okay, no, no. Just keep on pumping. That's all you need to do for me. Keep on pumping his chest for me. That's, I don't need you to stop and talk okay. or anything. I just want okay. you to count out loud for me. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is this is missing. Okay, ma'am, just keep on pumping his chest. That's all you need to do for me, okay? Yes. Come on, please, hurry up. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, they're driving here as fast as they can. Okay, don't stop to say hurry up. Just keep on pumping and counting. I'm, I'm still doing it while I'm pumping you, okay? Okay. Still doing it. All right, just keep, just continue pumping. Just count on a second count with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Please hurry. Okay, man, they're getting there as fast as they can, okay? He's stiff and he's purple. Okay, keep I'm pumping his chest for me, ma'am. I'm still doing it, okay? Still doing it. Just don't make me count. Okay? Right, okay, that's fine. Just, you do a good job. Just keep on doing it for me. That's... All right, they're getting there as fast as they can, along with the sheriff's office also, okay? Please! Okay. Keep on pumping, ma'am. One, we were playing two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep on pumping for me, ma'am. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Believe me, I'm doing it, okay? We were playing okay. hiding speed. Okay. All right, I understand. All right, just keep on pumping for me, okay? Okay. Please hurry. This right, is okay. Horrible. This is horrific. What happened? Like, what happened? Okay, man, just keep on pumping his chest for me, okay? They're, they're, in, they're, they're in the parking lot. They should be up there shortly, okay? I'm still doing it, okay? All right, okay, good. And you found him in a suitcase, you said? Yes. We were playing hide and seek last night. I fell asleep. I think they're here. All right, just keep on pumping his chest until they take over, okay? I am, I am. Okay. I am. Okay. Can I stop pumping now? 
Let, yeah, let them take over for you, okay? When was the last time anybody saw him? The last night. Okay. We were playing hide and seek. He hit another. It's okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, he's been down too long. There's nothing we can record him. Hello, ma'am. And so we're there, obviously. Uh, all right. Yeah, no, my boyfriend, future boyfriend. Okay. Did he have any kind of metaphors? No. No, not that I know of. Hello? Hey, ma'am. The, the fire part's going to take care of you now, okay? Yeah, so we'll see you there. All righty. Oh, man, we're still there? Now, when the police get there, things are weird. They're just weird. And, you know, Sarah, she's got cotton mouth because she's been drinking. Y'all know what that's like. Remember when you were younger and you used to go out and have an all-nighter or something with your friends? Yeah. Well, Sarah at 42 is still doing it. Can I go? I had a cigarette. I'll get it for you, okay? Wait one second, okay? I really need something to drink. Okay. Well, I got my Dr. Pepper on the counter. Okay. okay. We'll take care. You give me one second. Um, what's going on? Sorry, I just got I... here, so fill me in. No problem. Like, yeah, me and I were right putting a puzzle together, and we've been doing some artwork right together. Home. You are putting a puzzle together? Yes, we have a puzzle that we started in there. Okay. We've been doing art, trying to take stuff off the wall to, to make new art put up there, like having a good time with one another. But we're drinking, we had a bottle of wine last night. Okay. Fine. So then it's like, we decided to play hide and seek, right? Okay. So he gets in the suitcase, okay? Who is this guy? That's my ex-husband. My former husband. How did he, he live here with you guys? No. I called him over here. Okay, okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. So then he came over here. Here, let's talk in private, okay? I called you guys. Mm -hmm. I tried getting your I, I, The problem is, is yeah. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. When I found it. Before you called? Yes! It's one o'clock right now. I tried... I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12.30ish, whatever. So I came downstairs, and I was like, oh, he's in the suitcase still. And that's when I found him, and I took him out, and I tried doing CPR, and then I called him, and then I called you guys. Now, where Sarah messes up is, <laughs> oh, poor Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Now, the one thing that Sarah forgets about is that when she was in her drunken stupor the night before, she recorded a whole bunch of stuff. She recorded her anger. She recorded her drunkenness. She recorded, she recorded him pleading that he wanted to get out. Oh, and it gets worse, guys, because apparently the suitcase while Jorge was still in it, was tossed down a staircase. So yeah, it looks really bad. It's looking really bad, looking really bad for Miss Sarah. So anyway, after all is said and done, she's arrested, right? Now, since then, Sarah has gone through more lawyers than you can count on one hand. And apparently, they can't find any doctor who's willing to put their medical license on the line to evaluate her in a way that would help the defense in their case. So the trial keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Now I have touched on Sarah's case before on my channel. However, I never really got into these letters that she's written the court system since her arrest. So let's dig into them. The first letter was written on October 3rd of 2022 to Frank J. Bankowitz. Mr. Bankowitz, I am writing to you in regards to not hearing from you and am becoming very concerned after receiving no response to any of my daily calls or from the letters I've sent. As of today, October 3rd, you have been my court-appointed attorney for almost three months, 12 weeks, 84 days, and only spoken to me three times. July 14th, video introduction, 15 minutes. August 2nd, Video update, 15 minutes. August 22nd, visit in person, 90 minutes. I have written two letters in the meantime. My most recent I sent on September 12, 2022, with no response. 
I am unaware of the difficulties you are having in communication with me, either via video, phone, letter, or in person, especially via phone, which to me is the simplest form of doing so, even if just for a brief update, which takes only minutes. I believed by you giving me your personal cell number, you were going to answer when I called. I would at least know all is well and have a better understanding of the status of some things, what to plan on, or what I may need to work on. With no communication makes my end more difficult, drawn out, and painful. Please figure out whatever necessary for my phone calls to be answers, which you will be reimbursed for when you submit your cost. It feels at this rate of communication and meetings and you just coming on board, not having all of discovery to go over on top of the everything else to be done and depth and to be done and in depth. How much longer am I really going to be here added to the 32 months already, especially if we are communicating, especially if we communicate, however, you eventually do only one time a month, if that. As for all the months of September, I know nothing from not hearing from you. I understand you have other clients and you've been recuperating from your back, but remember, please, how long I've been here. But remember, please, how long I've been here. You are my sixth attorney, not, not by choice, and the magnitude of my case with not knowing what's going on or where you are, how much harder it is for me. I wanna get on with my life, Mr. Bankowitz, and not missing any more time necessary with, from my son. Yes, she has a child. I've already missed four of his birthdays and spent three of my own in here. Please understand. No, too, I am patient, clearly after all the time I've already invested, and still smiling and willing to go above and beyond whatever I, we need to do to properly and truthfully convey my very convoluted misunderstood side of everything which i boldly told you told you in our last meeting last month i am dedicated ready to start and overdue i am so very grateful mr bankowitz for you all you are doing have done and will do we're in this together and i'm so blessed you are my attorney God has put us in each other's path for a reason, and I can't wait to see what you and he will do. I'm praying the sixth time's a charm. Please respond. I await your response. Thank you profusely, Sarah Boone. And no, she didn't write AKA Suitcase Sarah. All right, so then we move forward to November 3rd, 2022, and she's writing to the judge. Honorable Judge Wooten, Forgive me in advance for having to utilize your invaluable time to ask the current progress of my case, but after not having any form of communication with my attorney appointed by you, now after 11 weeks and counting, and after sending four letters to my attorney appointed by you with no response, and after finally finding out an outside resource to inform me of the uneventful, confusing filed documents online by my attorney appointed by you, I'm still waiting with the perpetual question mark over my head. No letter, no video visits, no face-to-face -face visits, no answered phone calls from my attorney, or even a response from you, Your Honor. Regarding one of my letters expressing my legitimate concern of what's going on in my case, and where's my attorney? It has now been over four months since being appointed another attorney, my sixth one and not by my decision, influence, or choice, and almost three of the four months not hearing from said attorney. Why? What is the reason? Why haven't I received a letter, even a 15-minute video update, anything? Even after my PTC on October the 25th is what truly confuses me and nonetheless upsets me the fact that I was not in attendance so I could know what's going on in my case especially considering I have not heard from my attorney in 11 weeks and should have been included. Why was I not? This is my case. Was Mr. Bankowitz even there to represent me? I don't know. Anything still. 
The problem is that my constitutional rights are incorrectly being waived without my knowledge or permission. I've never signed anything nor verbalized the idea I wish to waive my appearance to any of my court dates. I want to be present for all dates. Going forward, please. Regardless of the significance. All are significant to me since my attorney fails to relay any information in any way. If he's not going to, then I must myself and for myself, as always, my entire life. What else can I do? Who else can I seek help from? I have you and God, Judge Wooten. If I do have an attorney, where is he? There's so much to do all over my case. Hopefully the right way this time. Off to a rocky start, where I wonder how more extended my time will be, on top of the almost soon to be 36 months, three years already. Is this how the justice system really works? Am I being penalized for wanting to be fully involved in everything in my case and intelligent enough to know how my case is being handled is unjust and, from my point of view, disastrous considering I'm still here sitting in Orange County Jail, counting the days and praying my sixth attorney contacts me and I, we, can move forward. Finally, coming to an end to this seemingless, endless debacle. You would think, considering the circus show my entire case is being made out of, with all the hype, sensation, and publicity, I received a letter all the way from across the pond in England the other day, it would be being handled more professional, better. I learn something now every day about facts, e events, and outcomes in my case from all the inmates and officers as well. I wonder if they might know where my attorney is. Bottom line, please understand, I don't want to be here any longer. I don't want to be hindered any longer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to stop the laugh there for a second. In getting just the starting line again, in getting to just the starting line again, I don't want to be suppressed in being heard, finally, truthfully, and correctly. So when Judge Wooten, when will I hear from my attorney? Or, so Judge Wooten, when will I hear from my attorney? Or you please, just with some type of response other than a copy of my letters I keep sending, which I already have. <laughs> In the meantime, it's my understanding the following documents have been filed in my case since the appointment of Frank Bankowitz, my attorney, MIA. And she lists these little things right here, going from July 11th down to October 25th. That's it. In the almost four months I've been a client of Mr. Bankowitz, this is the only progress. What's next? Where are my copies of everything filed ever? This is one way I can have some idea of what's happening. And please remember, I have no access to a computer nor any reliable outside resource to check anything for me. Please mail copies. I'm trying to come up with any solution possible to keep me, the other party in my case, informed and up to date. This also is a part of the court's responsibility. I would especially think knowing I've not heard from my attorney in any way for 11 weeks and I want to be included. As always, I thank you for your time and understanding. Please help how please help however you are able. I'm not helpless. I'm I am ready to get this show on the road and to hear from someone other than myself asking the same questions over and over and over. What's going on in my case? Or how many more pins will I exhaust asking? Grateful and patiently waiting, I await your response. Sincerely, Sarah Boone. On December 5th, she decides to send the judge a list of the summary of progress in her case. And this time, she is so angry that she doesn't even bother to address the judge in the letter with a dear. She just starts the letter saying, where's my attorney? Where are you, Judge Wooten? I understand the holiday mode everyone is in while we inmates sit and wait for it to pass. But before I come to the end of yet another year, almost three for me in OCCD, it would be respectful of the courts to please advise the status and location of my attorney foremost and, all, and, all, 
and also provide any real progress of my case, which is difficult to do and further without an attorney. Nonetheless, after being appointed so many, I thought hopefully the level of dysfunction would be lessened. Unfortunately, to date, I am sadly mistaken, and I feel I've been severely misled. Even more unfortunate seems to be the lack of representation from any party of my case other than myself. Look at the numbers. In the meantime, and in prepar in the meantime, and in preparation for the upcoming status hearing on February December twentieth, which I just received notice for. Thank you for the inclusion. I am in the process of writing to our governor regarding the mismanagement of my case and the multiple added obstacles and deterrence I am experiencing, trying to avoid any further time consume, trying to avoid any further time consuming hindrance or setbacks going forward. Some of the major legitimate concerns of mine are the violations of my constitutional rights, the degree of neglect, and the nonchalant approach by everyone in my case to substantially progress and illegal non-permissive release and distribution by the Orange County Sheriff's Department of crucial confidential case files, videos, photographs, documents, etc. pertinent to my case, which I have not even seen or even know about. Everyone knows more than I do about my case. As a result, it is impossible to choose a jury that I am also to choose a jury to be impartial, fair, and influenced by all the mutated, exaggerated hype sensationalism, this being a significant reason why I requested a change of venue previously. At this point, it will make no difference. There's nowhere I am not known. The premature, unfair judgment by everyone has wrongfully and inappropriately already been made. I haven't even seen my discovery or know where my attorney is. My sixth attorney. Not only am I, the other party in my case, still in the dark with everything. I am blind in the dark. This is wrong, unfair, especially for a still proud citizen of the United States of America, and unacceptable. There is more to everything, much more, and in which I've been patient to an extreme to explain, interpret, and educate what now seems to be the whole world. I am hopeful the governor will be able to untangle the chaos and mistreatment. No one else seems to be available or willing to abide by the protocol of our justice system and rightfully, eagerly apply, eagerly apply themselves. These sentences just run on and on and on. I'm hoping these, I'm hoping still these aforementioned topics can be further discussed at the hearing on the 20th and in which I am bringing to everyone's attention prior. I have not heard from my court appointed attorney to date, so I am unaware what else may be on the docket. It's time to finally move forward and in all the right ways. Happy holidays, Sarah Boone. She did copy Mr. Bankworks, by the way, it looks like. I mean, she got his name down there in the lower right-hand corner. I'm also sending a direct copy to you in case the court and or judge does not therefore give giving. Oh, I guess she's writing this to Bankowitz. I'm also sending you a direct copy to you in case the court and or judge does not, therefore giving no reason of any unsurety of my ongoing concerns regarding having no communications from you in any matter for almost four months. I believe the court would have sent copies to you, all my letters to them, but since I have been unsuccessful in receiving a response or an update by their side, also, I'm taking it upon myself to make sure everyone is aware I am still sitting here waiting on you. Please respond. I look forward to seeing you at the hearing, if not before then, with very much overdue and anticipated progress. Thank you, Sarah Boone. All right, so those are some of the letters she sent. I think, obviously, there's a lot more. I just can't. I can't go on. I can't keep reading them. She's driving me nuts. Now, I do have a video that I will link at the end of this one so that you guys can go back and watch her last court, her last time in court. She seems to be better. She seems to be less anxious. I don't know. Sounds like they may need to up her meds. I'm not sure. But again, for all intents and purposes, Sarah is innocent until she is proven guilty. And and let me repeat myself here because I, I truly believe that Sarah did not want to unalive this man. I believe she was trying to teach him a lesson and she's just stupid. That's just all there is to it.
And bless her heart, she just didn't have enough sense to know that he wouldn't make it. She had no idea what she was doing. I truly believe that. Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday. TGIF, everyone. Are you guys ready for the weekend? I am. Oh, well, almost. I have to go run some errands today, but I'm almost ready. While we wait for everyone to come in, I'm going to take a few moments to discuss what's going on with Sarah Boone and her trial. First off, Sarah Boone, she's 42 years old. We we lovingly refer to her as Suitcase Sarah Boone. You know, I, I don't want to show, I guess I, I need to be cautious not to show disrespect to the Torres family and their, their loss. I don't mean to. It's just, you guys, she has made this a complete circus. I mean, she's not the female Darrell or Daryl Brooks, but she's pretty damn close. And it could be you, that we are going to end up seeing this woman representing herself. We're, we're leaning towards that. The judge doesn't want that. You can tell, but her lawyer is like, look, I don't, Hey, I, you know, she's like, just, I need a shot. Somebody give me a drink. Cause this isn't working out for me. I really came in with the best intentions. I tried all I can. I mean, is anybody shocked? Is anybody really that shocked? Hey, Heidi. Hey, Lenny. Good morning. No, we're not shocked. We're not shocked at all, actually. We knew it was coming. I'm so glad that I was prepared for this one. Hey, coffee cake. Holy cow. I know, right? You guys, this none of this is going to... <laughs> none of this is going gonna, is gonna to make you guys go, Oh, I'm so surprised. Let's get to what happened today in court. I'm going to play this more than once because there's a lot here and there's some of this that I'm trying to understand what they're saying and I can't understand it all. I will tell you that Laura, Laura, I will tell you that um, Sarah is upset that her attorney does not have a more loving demeanor. Yeah, I think that's what she says here. She does also refer to her fans. Are you guys, are any of you guys her fans? She's referring to her fans here in, in this discussion. This happened just moments ago in court. In Orange County, Florida. Um, Judge, I've obviously not seen the letter. Um, Ms. Boone is correct. She has walked out of the last two visits when I've tried to review things with her. Just so the court knows, I've spent probably 20 hours, a little bit more, a little bit less, with Ms. Boone. She has lots of lists, lots of questions in reviewing the court file. Um, she was distressed previously about having access to her lawyers. I have taken collect phone calls from her that are at my expense. JAC doesn't reimburse you because I think it's important for clients to have access. I have spent... On, please. No one's interrupted you this morning, Ms. Boone. As I said, I've spent over 20 hours going through her questions, going through her list, um, when I try to update her with regard to the depositions that I took recently, she opted to exit the jail conference. When I try to um, review some things with regard to discovery as to things I wanted to make sure she was aware of, um, she walked out. She has asked me repeatedly for a copy of some medical records. Um, based on the discovery I got from the previous attorneys, the one of the copies of those medical records had her handwritten notes. So she had had a copy given to her previously. She reviewed them with previous attorneys. I sent her a new copy. Um, some of the things that she thinks are important get the same importance too. And you try to explain that to a client. Um, you know, I, I know the court's in a difficult position, but at this point we're at that impasse of 
if she walks out of every conference that I give with her, um, I'm, I'm not sure what that says about the attorney-client relationship. We're not frozen. I was actually talking. I was muted. I did it again. I apologize. Okay. Let's just take a moment here and break down what's, what's just happened here. You First of all, let me just say one thing. Sarah Boone owns a label maker. This woman has to own a label maker. This is, oh, oh. She's, she's arguing with the, she doesn't like what her attorney's doing or the strategy that her attorney is going towards. She doesn't like the way things are leaning. She wants to put in this item or that item and her attorney is saying, no, this isn't, you know, and probably her attorney, because she's a female, is kind of getting a little harsh with her because, you know, we get harsher with other women, I think, than we do men sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, let me just go to it. I, I, I can't. I'll stop talking now here. Relationship. Ma'am, you said that there was something else that you had other than a 58 page. <laughs> what other information is it that you're seeking to have me take a look at? Um, it's things I've been working on in the meantime. It's things that she likes to tell me is not necessary, but I know for a fact that it's necessary. She likes to, in quotes, put things to rest all the time and constantly tells me I'm not having this conversation with you. So I'm not going to waste my time and I being in jail has supposedly abundant amounts of, she's not going to waste my time because she's not going to explain something to me. And I have taken it upon myself to explain it to myself because she refuses to do so. I don't understand what it is that she has against me. I have told her from day one that her snotty attitude was inappropriate, and I try very hard to bear with her and her attitude. I don't know what it is that I'm doing wrong to her, but I feel that her attitude has equal prejudice, which is not in my favor, especially considering she's supposedly representing my life. Okay. Give me an example, of, if you could, of items that you believe are important Ms. Cashman is not giving attention to or dismissing as you may have framed it. Yes, Your Honor. Um, she likes to tell me that I don't like her answers. She's not giving me any answers to this. I've written three pages worth of questions, but I'm still waiting for her and any other attorney to actually answer for me. She doesn't want to answer any of my questions. Why can't I have a download of my phone? Why can't I speak to my investigator? Why can't I fully utilize my constitutional rights? There's three pages with a question that I have. What constitutional rights specifically? Um, I am, I'm very wary about having a fair file at this point. Um, there are a handful of other amendments that I have been uh, researching and working on and trying to incorporate. To me, what I have written to you is obvious, and apparently from the correspondence that I get from the world, South Korea was the last place that I received correspondence, they obviously see the same thing. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong other than wanting to have a very successful outcome. It's just been long and drawn out, and I believe that God obviously will really give me a such a in him or to give me this very unique adventure that I am on and I'm doing my best to let everyone know who I really am as opposed to the malicious murderer that everyone thinks that I am. I don't feel that she can do that properly. I still always, the reason why I'm here is hope, is to hope that she will come in with a gentle, soft aside and actually listen to what it is that I'm saying and see the bigger picture other than what the one avenue that she keeps going down in more than one way. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm not saying that. I'm trying to remove her. I'm just trying to ask you, please, forgive me if I have to ask you for this. If you could please let her know, please, to 
just be nice to me and have a welcoming attitude and things will probably change and I will not get up and I won't go. I, please don't lie to me. Please don't give me half truth. And well, what instances where there's been falsities or lies that have been told to you by Who is rolling on the floor laughing right now? <laughs> How many of you got? Y'all, put a one in the chat if you're laughing. Did you guys need this on a Friday morning? I certainly did. We are starting off the weekend right, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. If she could just be nice to me. If she could just be kind. But you know what she did? Her attorney would explain it to her. So she took the time to explain it to herself. She said that. She said that out loud. She said that out loud in court, y'all. <laughs> oh. Miss Cashman, can you give me an example? My biggest one, is for me being here also in five years, no one has ever bothered to try to get me a bond. What's the lie? You said that she has lied to you. What is the lie? The process of getting a bond. She lied to my brother um, in regards to telling him that um, he would need to come down to the courthouse to have multiple photographs taken for documentation. We would have to bring the security information to his house to her, and then it turns into everything else. And then it turns into all these other different stories of why she won't do or why she has said certain things. It always changes when it mutates. Okay, well, let's focus on the bond issue because you said that she's lied to you, and what you've told me so far, none of that is inaccurate. So, how is it though? Because I don't have any experience prior to this, so I don't know the process of getting a bond. Why would she lie to me? Because I don't know the process of getting a bond other than what I read, and it's just for her to do a bond a motion uh, for a bond hearing. But I didn't know that. I can't spend all my time defending what I'm doing and, and at the same time be effectively preparing the case for trial. Um, you know, in, in, in these situations, I know it puts the court in a very difficult position. Um, I, as I see it, Ms. Boone, he has a couple options. Number one, she can ask you to represent herself. Um, she has the right to, you have a foreign hearing and determine whether she's capable. The court then has to address the issue of whether it's appropriate to appoint standby counsel. Obviously, since she believes not a word that I say after 40 years of chewing criminal defense, I'm, I'm probably not the right lawyer for it. 
I'm probably not the right lawyer for her. Yes. Okay, wait a minute. I have to say one thing. What did Sarah say in her last uh, attempt when she was dealing with her other guy? Let's see what she said. I think I have it here somewhere. I've been here for four years and I'm tired of being here and I'm tired of going through all of these attorneys, which are not my fault. But when a hundred days have passed and I haven't heard or said or done anything other than try to figure out where you are because your phone doesn't work, I'm not a bad person because of that. I'm not a bad person because of that. Not my fault. Not my fault. Not my fault. I'm not a bad person because of that. Sorry, I had to do that. You know, the other thing is she gets one last lawyer, either works or doesn't. And, you know, and sometimes, unfortunately, the court gets put in a position that you have to have that um, conversation with a client that you don't, you know, if you want your counsel of choice, then you need to hire your counsel of choice. And everyone can certainly do that. And if you're indigent, you know, the court can only go through this so many times with Miss Boone coming to the court and, they're ending up being irreconcilable differences um, such that the counsel that you have appointed um, can't move forward and provide effective assistance to counsel. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. My last week of my period is um, the first full week of August and it starts again on the last full week of August. So we could set it then, but I know that you have trial case management with Judge Marquez on the 20th or the 21st of June, which may impact that. So, and, I, and I have a trial certain with Judge Harris August 5th and... As do I. Um, August seems a bit difficult for me. For, for a week, for, for Mr. Robbins, okay. So the options that I see it are, we can specially set this for the week of August 26th, or we set it for the trial period beginning September 30. The hiccup with that first week of September 30 is we have a court holiday on Thursday, October the 3rd, which would limit us to a four day trial period, which I don't believe is, in, is not sufficient. So that would take us to either October 7 or October 14. So based on the court's trial calendar, that's what I've got available. August 26th, October 7 or October 14. I think the October 7 or October 14 is more realistic, Judge. I know that Mr. Cacciatore has other trials too and, and other things on other judges' pre-trial dockets and those things we're specially set in July and in September. Mr. Cat story. I think we can. Uh, I think October 7th is fine. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to specially set this matter for the second week of the September 30 trial period, beginning Monday, October 7th. We will set this matter for trial case management um, on the 24th of September, right? on September 24 at 9 a.m. Okay. <laughs> Jerry Wayne says, oh, please let her represent herself. Please, please let it happen. I know. And if guys, if you're late coming in, don't worry. I'm going to replay this over again. It's about, it's less than 15 minutes um, of them. And it's clipped because Court TV, again, was having issues with their um, video in the courtroom. And so not, they didn't get all of it. And I don't know if they're the only ones in there with a camera. I'm going to, while I'm playing the sec this is the second time, I'll go back and look and see if there's anybody else that has any other coverage on it. Hey. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. JPC says, did she say her fans? Yes, she did. She said her fans. She said her fans. She has fans. Well, at least she's starting to, you know, she's starting to see the the positive side of things, you know, I, before in the past, when Sarah has been in court, it's always been the glass, the glass is half full, but bless her heart. Someone's gotten a hold of her there in prison and talked some good sense into her and says, Sarah, you're a good person. 
You was kind. You was smart. You was important. Of course, she already knew she was important. She already knew that. Okay, I want to go back here because there was a, it was a little bit, it was difficult trying to listen to exactly what was being said. So I'm pulling up the transcript here. And so the judge says to her, what other information is it that you're seeking to have me take a look at? Because he said, I've got, <laughs> he said, <laughs> the judge said, okay, hang on, I'm trying to find this for such a spot. You try to explain that to a client. Okay, so that she's saying this is after the attorney said, you know, it's just difficult position. But at this point, we're at this impasse. Of, she walks out every time we have a conference call or she turns off the thing. She says, I give her. I'm not sure what that says about the attorney client relationship. And I think the judge is what says, maybe you said there was something else that you had other than a 58 page letter. <laughs> JPC. Hey girl. Hey, thank you for that kind, kind super chat. You're so nice. I appreciate you. Uh, what other information is it that you're seeking to have Miss Sarah? And Sarah goes on and says, well, things that I've been working on in the meantime, it's things that she like, <clears throat> she likes to tell me that it's not necessary, but I know for a fact it is necessary. She likes to, in quotes, put me to rest all the time and constantly tells me I'm not having this conversation with you. I'm not going to waste my time and being in jail have supposedly abundant amounts of, or I guess maybe her attorney said you being in jail supposedly have abundant amounts of time. She's not going to waste my time because she's not going to explain something to me. And I have seen it upon myself to explain it to myself because she refuses to do so. I don't understand what it is that she has against me. I have told her from day one that her snotty attitude was inappropriate. And I try very hard to bear with her and her attitude. I don't know if I'm doing well to her, but I, and I apologize, this might be not very exact, but this is the kind of, the, this is what the transcript picked up. I do not know if I'm doing well to her, but I feel that her attitude has equal prejudice, which is not a nice thing, especially considering supposedly representing my life. Okay. Give me, and then the judge goes, okay, well, give me an example if you could of the items that you believe are important. And she goes, Miss Cashman is not giving attention to or dismissing, um, some of the things that I have framed out. And she said, oh, the judge says that, that the attorney is not doing that. You framed it. And she said, well, yes, your honor. She likes to tell me that I don't like her answers. She's not giving me any answers to this. I've written three pages worth of questions, but I'm still waiting for her or any other attorney to actually answer for me, such as why can't I have a bond? Why can't I have a download on my phone? Why can't I speak to my investigator? Why can't I have medical records? Why can't I fully legalize my constitutional rights? I swear to you guys, there is going to be a sovereign citizen in jail that's going to get a hold of this woman. We're going to see it happen. We're going to see some of that start to come out here soon. You know it is. There's, let's see, there's three pages worth of questions that I have to, I have to answer. What constitutional rights specifically? And she says, well, I'm very worried about having a, f a fair trial at this point. There's a handful of other amendments that I have not researched and I'm working on trying to incorporate. To me, what I've written to you is obvious and apparent from the correspondence that I get from the world. South Korea was the last place that I received correspondence from. They obviously see the same thing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong other than wanting to have a successful outcome. Well, everything, I think everyone that's going up for trial for murder wants a successful outcome, Sarah. It's just been long and drawn out. And I believe that God obviously knows he can be as much as I do something him or can give him, give me this very unique adventure that I am on. And I'm not, and I'm doing my best to let everyone know who I really am. <laughs> But I think we're finding out exactly who you are, booger. Oh, oh, as opposed to the malicious murderer that everyone thinks that I am. Girl, you videotaped that. You had it on videotape of what you did to this man. Ugh. All right. We're going to watch this from the beginning again because I just, 
I'm, so does this help you guys? Because I know that the the audio was eh, the audio was in eh, the catching the in and out was in. Eh. Let's start over. And while we're doing this, I'm going to see if I can't find somebody that else had more feed in the courtroom. Boone is correct. She has walked out of the last two visits when I've tried to review things with her. Just so the court knows, I've spent probably 20 hours, a little bit more, a little bit less, with Miss Boone. She has lots of lists, lots of questions in reviewing the court file. Um, she was distressed previously about having access to her lawyers. I have taken collect phone calls from her that are at my expense. JAC doesn't reimburse you because I think it's important for clients to have access. I have spent- on, please. No one's interrupted you this morning, Ms. Boone. As I said, I've spent over 20 hours going through her questions, going through her list. Um, when I try to update her with regard to the depositions that I took recently, she opted to exit the jail conference. When I try to um, review some things with regard to discovery as to things I wanted to make sure she was aware of, um, she walked out. She has asked me repeatedly for a copy of some medical records. Um, based on the discovery I got from the previous attorneys, the one of the copies of those medical records had her handwritten notes. So she had had a copy given to her previously. She'd reviewed them with previous attorneys. I sent her a new copy. Um, some of the things that she thinks are important from a lawyer perspective, her hips I don't attach the same importance to. And you try to explain that to a client. Um, you know, I, I know the court's in a difficult position, but at this point we're at that impasse of if she walks out of every conference that I have with her, um, I'm, I'm not sure what that says about the attorney-client relationship. Ma'am, you said that there was something else that you had other than a 58-page <laughs> letter. <laughs> What other information is it that you're seeking to have me take a look at? Um, it's things that I've been working on in the meantime. It's things that she likes to tell me is not necessary, but I know for a fact it is necessary. She likes to, in quotes, put things to rest all the time and constantly tells me I'm not having this conversation with you. So I'm not going to waste my time, and I, being in jail, have supposedly abundant amounts of. She's not going to waste my time because she's not going to explain something to me. And I have taken it upon myself to explain it to myself because she refuses to do so. I don't understand what it is that she has against me. I have told her from day one that her snotty attitude was inappropriate, and I try very hard to bear with her and her attitude. I don't know what it is that I'm doing wrong to her, but I feel that her attitude has equal prejudice, which is not in my favor, especially considering she's the person who's been representing my life. Okay. Give me an example of, if you could, of items that you believe are important. Ms. Cashman is not giving attention to or dismissing as you may have framed it. Um, she likes to tell me that I don't like her answers. She's not giving me any answers to this. I've written three pages worth of questions, but I'm still waiting for her and any other attorney to actually answer for me, such as, why can't I have a bond? Why can't I have a download of my phone? Why can't I speak to my investigator? Why can't I have my medical records? Why can't I fully really utilize my constitutional rights? There's three pages worth of questions that I What have. constitutional rights, specifically? Um, I am I'm very wary about having a fair trial at this point. Um, there are a handful of other amendments that I have been uh, researching and working on and trying to incorporate. To me, 
what I have written to you is obvious. And apparently from the correspondence that I get from the world, South Korea was the last place that I received correspondence. They obviously see the same thing. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong other than wanting to have a very successful outcome. It's just been long and drawn out, and I believe that God obviously will be to be as much as I demand or can give me this very unique adventure that I am on, and I'm doing my best to let everyone know who I really am as opposed to the malicious murderer that everyone thinks that I am. I don't feel that she can do that properly. I still always, the reason why I'm here is hope, is to hope that she will come in with a gentle, softer side and actually listen to what it is that I'm saying and see the bigger picture other than what the one avenue that she keeps going down. You're probably way to win in more than one way. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm not saying that I'm trying to remove her. I'm just trying to ask you, please, forgive me if I need to ask you for this. If you could please let her know, please, to just be nice to me and have a welcoming attitude and things will probably change and I will not get up and I won't go. I Please don't lie to me. Please don't give me half-truths. And well, What instances where there's been falsities or lies that have been told to you by Ms. Cashman? Can you give me an example? My biggest one, Your is for me being here also in five years, no one has ever bothered to try to get me a bond. What's the lie? You said that she has lied to you. What is the lie? The process of getting a bond. She lied to my brother um, in regards to telling him that um, he would need to come down to the courthouse to have multiple photographs taken for documentation and would have to bring the security information leading to his house to her and then it turns into everything else and then it turns into all these other different stories of why she won't do or why she has said certain things it always changes in the UK after I asked her for certain things not just for the bond but for other things also okay well let's focus on the bond issue yeah. because you said that she's lied to you and what you've told me so far none of that is inaccurate so how is it though, because I don't have any experience prior to this, so I don't know the process of getting a bond other than what I have read, and it's just for her to do a bond a motion uh, for a bond hearing. But I didn't know that anyone, all of the other inmates, even officers, have ever said that they've had to do that process in order to have photographs taken and documented and disproved and visited to his house. He's not listening my mom, which I told her a million and one time, but she still spooked him by asking by him something that he's going to have to, and it was right in the security clearance considering he's in the, the service, the military. So she totally deterred me from having my brother's address in order for me to have a motion for a bond. No one else has even any father to even ask me for one, and I will be honest with you and the court. I know for a fact that however sky high my limit would be for my bond to receive, I know for a fact, unless my fans um, would set up those funny pages, or God will, however else it is he planned on for me to have it paid, if at all, my point is to utilize my right to have a bond. And with the information I have included in here to you, for the amount of consolation of publicity, there's nowhere that I could go, even if I were to be at a close flight risk, because of the amount of information that everybody already knows about me, what I look like, and what I eat, apparently, and so many other things. There's nowhere I could go. If I were to even, even think about being a flight risk, it's just the fact that I would like please to have the bond so I can say that I've actually achieved something. Never told me he had to provide pictures or to the house. What I said was, maybe he's been in the courtroom for all the hearings, and, and it's likely that they would be here for the bond hearing, and that your face could be on the television, and it was a concern for him. And I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. But, I, you know, Judge, I can't spend all my time defending what I'm doing and and at the same time be effectively preparing a case for trial um, you know in, in in these situations I know it puts the court in a very difficult position um, 
I, as I see it, Ms. Boone has a couple options. Number one, she can ask you to represent herself. Um, she has the right to, you have a Faretta hearing and determine whether she's capable. The court then has to address the issue of whether it's appropriate to appoint standby counsel. Obviously, since she believes not a word that I say after 40 years of doing criminal defense, I'm, I'm probably not the right lawyer for that. You know, the other thing is she gets one last lawyer, either works or doesn't, and, you know, and sometimes, unfortunately, the court gets put in a position that you have to have that um, conversation with a client that you don't, you know, if you want your counsel of choice, then you need to hire your counsel of choice and everyone can certainly do that. And if you're indigent, you know, the court can only go through this so many times with Miss Boone coming to the court and they're ending up being irreconcilable differences um, such that the counsel that you have appointed um, can't move forward and provide effective assistance to counsel. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. My last week of my period is um, the first full week of August and it starts again on the last full week of August. So we can set it then, but I know that you have trial case management with Judge Marquez on the 20th or the 21st of June, which may impact that. So, and I and I have a trial certain with Judge Harris August fifth, and as do I. Um, August seems a bit difficult for me. For for Mr. Robbins, okay. So the options that I see it are. We can specially set this for the week of August 26th, or we set it for the trial period beginning September 30. The hiccup with that first week of September 30 is we have a court holiday on Thursday, October the 3rd, which would limit us to a four day trial period, which I don't believe is, in, is not sufficient. So that would take us to either October 7 or October 14. So based on the court's trial calendar, that's what I've got available. August 26th, October 7th, or October 14th. I think the October 7th or October 14th is more realistic, Judge. I know that Mr. Cacciatore has other trials too and, and other things on other judges' pre-trial dockets and those things. We're specially set in July and in September. Mr. Cacciatore? I think we can. I think October 7th is fine. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to specially set this matter for the second week of the September 30 trial period, beginning Monday, October 7th. We will set this matter for trial case management um, on the 24th of September, right? On September 24th at 9 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll do you at 1.30 in the afternoon. It's Tuesday, September 24th. Tuesday, September 24th, 1.30 in the afternoon for our trial case management. Trial date certain on October the 7th. <coughs> um, Deputy, if you could please uh, grab the two packages of submittals from Ms. Boone. Oh, I thought it was two different envelopes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> I will review that. And after the review, the court will either issue an order or set this matter for hearing based on what it is that's been presented by Ms. Boone. Mr. Cacciatore, anything else we need to address this morning, sir? Ms. Cashman, anything else we need to address? Not that I'm aware of at this time, Judge. Ms. Boone, is there anything else you need to bring to my attention at this time? I'm grateful for your time. I was forgiven for having to utilize it. But I really do hope that you can review thoroughly what it is that I'm asking for from my attorney, Mr. representative, for the trial that's happening in October ma'am i will i've asked for your submittals i will be reviewing them all right thank you all right y'all thank you very much have a great day okay can you imagine if she did represent herself and how she would argue in court can you imagine 
Okay, what happened at her previous trial or what happened with her previous attorney? Here's what she said about her previous attorney. I've been here for four years and I'm tired of being here. And I'm tired of going through all of these attorneys, which are not my fault. But when 100 days have passed and I haven't heard or said or done anything other than try to figure out where you are because your phone doesn't work, I'm not a bad person because of that. I'm not a bad person because of that. Not my fault. Not my fault. Not my fault. I'm not a bad person because of that. Oh, she's exhausting. What happened at her? Somebody was asking me about what the charges are and everything. And um, it's second degree manslaughter. But it said on here first degree death. But it's second degree. She's not up for she's up for life. Um, well, I want to show you guys what happened at her last. Well, this was a previous a previous hearing with a previous attorney, because as we know, she was on eight or she's on eight now. She might be going into nine. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, for goodness sakes, I love. Somebody said, <clears throat> probably the judge. Hang on. I got I got a ton of stuff pulled up, so it's, it's slow. I think this is where she argues with the judge again. If he would just read her freaking letters, that's all, all right. she wants. Now, this is the beginning. This is where Fox came in. Here we go. He's so tired of her. And, oh, this was a previous judge, too. <laughs> the judge even got off of it. Hi, people. <laughs> she even it's ran the CB judge off. This morning. Oh, it hasn't started yet. Oh, well, thank you, CB. What date was this thank trial? God I didn't miss it. I am not. Oh. Whew, this was on. I'm so unorganized. This was today. eight months ago. I had enough coffee, I guess. This was September 8th. I thought this I had my watching. ducks in a row. And then one of them went just waltzing off on me this morning. I think this is tough in prison. Or should... Somebody's. <laughs> What's taking so long? There's trans grabbing her letters. <laughs> They're having to type them all in. Give us a couple of weeks. But well, I think you guys, somebody's not happy. <laughs> At least eight years, Shelly, you think? I know, Heidi. At what point? Good question, Bob, Bob Kitten. Nano six eleven. We're gonna be in a different state, so it'll be interesting how that. I gotta re-download that WebEx thing, you guys. I'll have to do that some other time, so we don't have to depend on somebody else to review this. But I couldn't find that I link. Apologize for the I WebEx. Found, my computer, all these. I've got to get some more RAM or something or whatever they call it. I need some com some computer. Help. It's on the motion. I understand. Oh. Thank you, though. They've been waiting on that. Look, he's got a walker, you guys. I didn't realize he had a walker. They've been waiting on that JAC thing. That was what was holding everything up for the last couple of months, getting that money approved to get her, um, what do you call it, her witness paid for since they're going after the Okay, hang on. For those of you appearing virtually, my apologies. We've been troubleshooting a system problem this morning. It appears that we have now resolved that. Let's go ahead and call up the Boone case. State of order. Two six 
Dave Catchatory, Frank Bancourt. Please raise your right hand. Please solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you back. Yes. Right. Can I have JAC announce themselves as well? Yes, Audrey Moore for JAC. All right. So we have multiple matters scheduled uh, this morning, one of which is Mr. Banquets's motion to withdraw. Uh, my reading of the law is I feel like I have to address that motion first and rule on that before I can address any other motions that would be uh, heard today. So well, yeah. Mr. Banquets, I'll start with you. Tell me why you're moving to withdraw. Judge, the, le the letters that have been coming to your honor uh, the derogatory berating of my services in this case, uh, I can't effectively represent her. Uh, I, she doesn't trust me. She calls me a, a dud, I think, a buffoon, uh, on and on and on and on. And no one should have to endure that type of uh, derogatory comments and expect to effectively represent someone, especially in a murder case. Ms. Boone, <clears throat> I read your letter dated August 26, 2023, and your letter dated August 30th, 2023. And just so we're clear, I read all of the letters that you send to the court. <laughs> Whether I respond or not is based on what's in the letter. And whether I'm asked to actually do something that's within my purview as a judge or not. If I understand correctly, you have now decided that you think it would be best, in fact, if Mr. Bankwitz was allowed to withdraw. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And you understand by him withdrawing, I'll have to appoint another attorney. Do you understand that? Yeah. And that attorney is not standing here, so we're not going to be able to address, and I'll give the state a chance to talk to me as well, but. Assuming I grant this, we won't be able to address the other issues that were docketed for today, which means I'm going to have to reset your case for a later date. Do you understand that? I'm not sure what items it is you're speaking of. I haven't received a copy yet of the letter. So we also were having a hearing today in regards to authorization for payment for an expert that your attorney believes he needs to defend you in the issue about the compensation of that expert, which is why JAC is participating today. I don't know if your next lawyer is going to think that that expert's the right person to use. No, this is her. This is the lawyer before the last one. This was her seventh. This was her sixth lawyer withdrawing. That's what we're watching now. Or whether they're going to go a different route. <clears throat> and even if they did, they're not standing here. And once Mr. Banquets is out, he's out. He can't argue the motion. So do you understand that? I fully understand. All right. Mr. Cacciatore, normally the state takes no position in these issues, but there are limited circumstances when the state does take a position. So are you taking a position on this motion withdrawal, Mr. Cacciatore? No, the or we would be not taking a position. All right. So uh, I'm going to grant Mr. Banquets's motion to withdraw. I'm going to appoint attorney Winston Hobson to represent Ms. Boone. Uh, in regards to the other matters scheduled today, I'm going to take no action on them at this time until Mr. Hobson can, well, in regards to the motion involving JAC. I'm simply going to take no action on that motion at this point in time until Mr. Hobson has a chance to review it and determine whether he wants to proceed with that motion. I will address the pretrial because today was also supposed to be pretrial. Here's what we'll do. Let me just get my calendar up. This has been going on way too long. Kelly says, I honestly think that she believes if she gets a bond, she can raise the money from her fans. As far as pretrial <laughs> conference, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to set this case for pretrial conference on Tuesday, November 28th, and the trial period starting Monday, December 
11th, I think any earlier period of time would be unrealistic for Mr. Hobson to get on board, get up to speed with the discovery and determine how he wants to proceed in regards to any experts. But I will set a status hearing on the case prior to that. Hey, Blanco. Change all my live streams. <laughs> All right, so I, I thought that there was a piece in here where she, he let her speak. Let's see. I really don't want to play the thing ever again. Is this it? And look at the evidence, look at the law, and do the best they can. Also, you've got court-appointed counsels. I've explained to you before Court appointed counsel rarely have the luxury of representing one person and only having one case to focus on. I have concerns that your expectations of what any court appointed counsel might do as far as spending time with you and the depth and degree of communication may be unrealistic. He just hit the nail on the head, did he not? Expectations. No. You always have the right to retain a lawyer to represent you. And then that's between you and that lawyer. You can demand whatever expectations that you have as part of that agreement. But when it's a court appointed lawyer, you have to accept and understand that they have other cases, other courtrooms, other responsibilities. And I'm cognizant of that when I'm addressing these types of issues about communication. So that's just food for thought, nothing to do today. I don't need a response from you. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that and you were thinking about that as we proceeded forward. <laughs> so again, the court minutes reflect that I am. He cut her off. I love it. I love it. All right, let me take that down. So that was, that was in September. That was her sixth attorney. Uh, <laughs> Blanca said, I'm, oh, you've been watching the Karen Reed trial. I haven't watched that one. I really should get into that one, but I haven't. It's been going on a long time, hasn't it? So anyway, if you guys are just tuning in, uh, earlier I played the full court feed from this. Well, everything that, that Court TV provided to us uh, this morning in the trial that Sarah had her status hearing because she was supposed to start court. She was supposed to start trial. Um. Did they even set a trial date that time? Yeah, they did. Wait a minute. Let me look at my notes. It was originally set for. They've already updated it. Well, this was originally set for 10 years ago, but you know how it's been with her. The trial was coming up here soon. Oh, crazy Sarah. But they've changed it to where. They're just doing the status hearings. <laughs> I gotta set a trial date. They're like, look, I gotta keep my calendar open on this one. I can't keep doing this. I'm running out of out of uh, eraser ink. <laughs> so the things that she said this morning were wait, let me find my notes. She says she wants everybody to know who she really is. And she doesn't feel like her attorney, her current attorney can properly do that. She felt that same way about her last seven attorneys. Uh, she says that she wants everyone to see the bigger picture and know that she's a good person. She didn't mean to do it because you all know it wasn't intentional. It was not intentional. Um, I'm just trying to ask you, please forgive me for having to ask you for this. If you could please let her know, please, to just be nice to me and have a welcoming attitude. And things will probably change with she and I. <laughs> she said that in court. <laughs> oh, she said she wants her attorney to stop lying to her. Please don't get, give me half truths, she said. And the judge says, well, what, what instances are you talking about, Sarah, Miss, Miss Boone, that are false truths? He didn't call her suitcase, Sarah, but you know we wanted that judge to call her suitcase, Sarah. And uh, he said, can you give me an example? She's like, well, my biggest one is for me being here also in five years. No, Six months is now five years. No one has ever bothered to try to get me off. Get, girl, where you, you think you're going to get acquitted? 
You think they're going to let you off at this? You videotaped what you did. As you know, if you guys watched that last trial that I covered, the one with uh, Jalen and Zion Foster, where he, the cousin who unalived his cousin or a second cousin, they had his, they had his full interrogation where he said he did it, right? And there were some other questionable things in there that I thought were questionable. There were some things I thought were questionable in that trial. The jury went right to it. In, I mean, in no time at all, they came back with a guilty verdict. So I don't understand. And she's taped this, this. And we've got all this interrogation video. I, I'm kind of wondering what they're going to allow in court between the day after where they had the body cam footage of all that, she, the way she was acting because her Dr. Pepper was more important than, and smoking a cigarette was more important than the guy that laying dead in her home. Um, and then also the, I mean, this interrogation, I don't see how anybody in the world hasn't seen it. Anybody that follows true crime. She wants to know why she can't get bonded out. She said she lied to my brother in regards to telling him that he would need to come down to the courthouse to have multiple photographs taken for documentation. He would have to bring security information to his house. And the judge interrupts. He's okay. Well, let's focus on the bond issue because you said that she's lied to you and what you've told me so far. None of that is inaccurate. So how is it though? Because I don't have any experience prior to this, but I know the process of getting a bond other than what I read. And it's just for her to do a bond motion for a bond hearing. But I didn't know that anyone, all of the other inmates, even officers, oh, she'd been talking to other inmates and somebody, was it Kelly that made that earlier? that said, or Helen that said her, her, uh, inmates, the inmates around her that have to listen to her, they are in pure hell. They're in their own sentence. Even officers have ever said that they've had to do this, that process in order to have photographs taken, documented and used. Uh, He's not trusting my mom, which I told her a million and one times, but she still spooked him by asking him, thinking that he's going to have to and would threaten his security clearance. I, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Because she, I guess he's in, her brother's in the military. So she totally deterred me from having my brother's address in order for me to have a motion for a bond. I, she's not a flight risk. No, she's going to stick around and talk this one out. <laughs> Sarah, if Sarah, if Sarah decided to flow, fly off and go hide somewhere, she'd end up, she couldn't stand it. She'd have to write a letter and then she'd get caught. <laughs> yes, she wrote a letter. Okay. It was a Dr. Pepper and a cigarette <laughs> and then drinking the water out of the, out of the hose, which, you know, I'm from Alabama. We did that too, but. Her attorney is known for her no-nonsense attitude. I, I kind of was thinking if we get a woman involved, she's going to be in there like, because like, you could just kind of tell the way she was looking at Sarah and talking to her. She's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. But I had high hopes for that woman to be, you know, to be able to get through to Sarah. And I don't think it's the attorney's fault at all. No, 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 no. She wants somebody to coddle her, do exactly. She's a, she's another Durrell. She wants a secretary. She wants a secretary, not an attorney. She wants a secretary to uh, walk her through the steps of what she should be doing and to get off on these charges. I want to read to you guys what it says on the affidavit. So, um, again, if you're just looking to watch what happened in court this morning, just moments ago, then you'll have to kind of go backwards. Uh, rewind. I played it early in the video. All right, let's go through this affidavit for those of you who are wanting to know exactly what's going on with this, this thing, because I know there, there's a lot of times there's new people coming in and they don't know what the heck we're talking about. So let's, let's just, she called into the 911 and she identified, she identified herself as Sarah Boone and she reported that, reported that they were playing a game of hide and seek. Sarah and Jorge jokingly thought it would be funny if Jorge got in the suitcase located in the living room. 
she zipped him up in a suitcase. She mentioned that she and him had been consuming alcohol during the night and she went upstairs and passed out in her bed. She later woke up to her cell phone ringing multiple times around 1100 hours. She went downstairs and did not see Jorge anywhere in the apartment. She then realized that he was supposed he was possibly still inside the suitcase. Now, well, I'll keep going. She unzipped the suitcase and found Jorge unresponsive and not breathing. Shortly after the 911 call, deputies arrived on scene. Orange County Fire Department confirmed that he was, in fact, deceased. The decedent was found lying near the front door of the residence near a big, near a blue suitcase. A small laceration was evident on the dece decedent's lips and what appeared to be some bruising around his eye. So there was some talk of that they felt like she had thrown the suitcase down the stairs. So that I think that we're that's going to come up more in court and I can't wait because I want to hear more details about that because we haven't really heard that much about it. But I want to know the evidence that they're finding. I guess that'll come in when they have the um the medical discussions on 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 the stand. Okay. So they interviewed Sarah on February 24th of 2020. And they did an audio interview with her in an unmarked agency vehicle outside of her residence. The following is a synopsis of Sarah Boone's sworn recorded statement. After she was read, after they read her her Miranda warnings, she agreed she understood what I had just read to her. At approximately on February twenty third, twenty twenty, at approximately sixteen hundred hours, Sarah was located at her residence along with her boyfriend, Jorge Torres Jr., who also resides at the apartment. Only Sarah and Jorge were located at the residence. Sarah's son would sometimes be at her residence when it was her days per the custody agreement she had with her ex-husband. Sarah said she and Jorge were painting pictures and completing a puzzle while sharing a bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay wine. As the evening went on, Sarah said her and Jorge decided to play a game of hide-and-seek. No, this is, these are, these are adults. This isn't, we're not, this isn't a play school. This is, these are adults we're talking about. Sarah hit upstairs in her shower first. She's so sneaky like that. <laughs> and Jorge never came to look for her. <laughs> he probably did it on purpose. He was like, go hide. I'll find you. I'm going to count to 10,000. I'll be up there. <laughs> I wonder how long she was hiding in the shower. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> After a while, she decided to go downstairs where she found him. I wonder if, you guys, I wonder if she got mad because he never came to find her. He wasn't playing hide and seek right. And she got mad and said, you're not playing right. You're not playing right. And he's like, okay, I'll play. Where are you? Gonna, okay, here, I'm going to hide in this suitcase. Here, zip me up. And she was still mad, right? I'm just, this is just, I'm just saying, what if this, what if, what if this is what happened? And so she's like, I'm going to zip him up and I'm not letting him out. But he could probably get out, but I'm not going to let him out. So Sarah and Jorge both thought it would be funny to, if she zipped him up in the blue suitcase that was located downstairs in the living room area that had a few miscellaneous items that had both planned, they had both planned to donate. Jorge willingly got into the suitcase and Sarah zipped the suitcase up. But two of Jorge's fingers were able to stick out of the suitcase. <sighs> if that was the case, he would have been able to unzip it, I think. But, you know, whatever. Sarah explained the attack hand. Sarah explained that the attached handle that made it easier to zip the suitcase was broken, but a paper zipper. A paper clip was in the zipper <clears throat> and she was able to zip the suitcase up with it. I wonder if that was why he couldn't unzip it himself. Maybe he thought, yeah, if she puts me in here, I'll be able to get out because on a regular zipper you can. But if it's the zipper's broken a little bit, maybe it was stuck. So on February 24th at approximately 30 hours, she decided she was going to go upstairs while he was still located in the suitcase, thinking he could get himself out. Sarah laid down in her bed and fell asleep approximately 20, 30 minutes after going upstairs. 
Sarah assumed that he was going to get out of the suitcase and come to bed as well. She said that neither her nor Jorge were drunk from the wine. Well, we know that's a lie because we heard her talking and there's no way that she was sober with in that video. The infamous video. <clears throat> All right. So she woke up in the morning and heard her cell phone ringing multiple times, but she ignored the calls. She said her cell phone was left downstairs from the night prior. Sarah knew her ex-husband, Brian Boone, was calling because he was the only person who called her repeatedly. Probably the only person that called her, period. To see if she was getting their son from school. So she said she stayed upstairs for a while and assumed he was that Jorge was still downstairs on the laptop looking for employment. He was unemployed. She was unemployed. Hey, Casey. What's up, girl? Uh, let's see. Sarah said she went downstairs at approximately 1100 hours and realized she could not find Jorge anywhere in the apartment. She freaked out and remembered that the last time she saw him, he was zipped up in the suitcase. <sighs> oh, she's a brainiac. All right. She unzipped the suitcase and found Jorge unresponsive. She called Brian, told him Jorge was dead and begged him to come to her residence. Brian only resides a few minutes away. When Brian got to the residence, he walked into the apartment, saw Jorge unresponsive on the floor, and told Sarah she needed to call 911. That's going to go against her, too, in court, because they're going to say, why didn't you call 911 immediately? Why didn't you try to save his life? You made no attempts to save his life at that point when you found him there unresponsive. So that's going to... Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Brian then immediately walked outside and stayed there until law enforcement arrived. He's smart. Poor Brian. Bless his heart. The man was married to her. I wonder how long they were married. And I wonder what he had to put up with. So Sarah followed the instructions from the 911 operator. And Sarah gave verbal and written consent by signing a waiver and affidavit form for the Orange County Sheriff's Office to search her phone. Digital forensic investigator. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Got my throat. A uh, digital investigator responded to the scene and began to download the cell phone. While the cell, pho cell phone was being downloaded, two videos were found on the phone. The first video began recording um, the night before. Jorge repeatedly yelling at, out Sarah's name. Sarah told Jorge, for everything you've done to me, fuck you. Sarah was laughing when she said, fuck you, stupid. Jorge repeatedly kept saying, calling out Sarah's name. Jorge said, I can't fucking breathe, seriously. And she said, yeah, that's what you do when you choke me. And Jorge continued to repeat himself, telling Sarah he could not breathe. Sarah, Sarah replied, that's on you. Oh, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me. When you cheat on me, not when you hurt me. Because, you know, re remember, we know she's going into this trial telling everyone or telling the jury that she was a, a victim of domestic abuse. So she says, you should probably shut the fuck up. In the video, the suitcase was facing downward, and you can see Jorge pushing on the suitcase in an attempt to get out. The video is two minutes and three seconds long. The second video began recording just prior to that, or just a little bit later, and Jorge yelling out her name. And the suitcase was now in a different position, facing upwards and moved over towards the left side of the living room. So this is why I think they believe that she like pushed it down some stairs or something. The medical examiner's office during the autopsy. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, wait, wait. The video was 22 seconds long. Synopsis of his autopsy. During the autopsy, it was noted that Jorge had, had injuries. He had long nail scratches to his mid upper back, a large nail scratch to the back of his neck, contusions to his left shoulder, left skull and forehead contusions, considered blunt force trauma, and a cut near his busted lip. You know, they talk about her dropping the suitcase down the stairs. She could have been beaten on the suitcase with a bat for all we know. Mark says he loves it when I talk dirty. You're such a mess. Go, go play some slots, Mark. <laughs> Follow-up interview with Sarah on February the 25th. Sarah drove herself to the, this, now this is the infamous video, right? But it just, it's a short point here that they're saying. Um, so she drove herself to the Orange County Sheriff's Office for this interview. 
And the following is a synopsis of her sworn recorded statement. After hearing it, once again, her Miranda rights, Sarah agreed that she understood all about her Miranda rights. Once again, never asking for a lawyer. God. Go ahead. I roll. I roll. After informing Sarah about the injuries to Jorge's, Jorge's body, she continued to deny any physical altercation occurred between the two of them. Sarah was shown the op approximate two-minute video that she, was record she had recorded on her cell phone. Not even halfway through, Sarah was no longer wishing to watch the video. She said she did not remember making the two videos. She said the video was bad. But remember, in her previous statement, she had said, but we weren't drunk. Now, all of a sudden, she's going to say, well, I was drinking. I don't remember. She denied intentionally leaving him in the suitcase. Sarah was asked why she intentionally went upstairs and waited for Jorge to come upstairs and did not check on him or let him out prior to going upstairs. And she replied, I don't know. Sarah contradicted her original statement and began to blame the consumption of alcohol. She was informed she was not free to leave. The, she was not free to leave and was under arrest. She responded to the central operations to transport Sarah to BRC and based off of Sarah's inconsistent statements on what occurred and the videos found on Sarah's iPhone. I believe this is the officer. I believe probable cause exists to charge Sarah Boone with second degree murder of Jorge Torres Jr. He is dead and his death was caused by Sarah Boone's criminal act. She zipped Jorge in the suitcase to where he could get not get out. Jorge begged Sarah repeatedly, telling her he could not breathe, and Sarah let, left him in the suitcase, therefore proves the unlawful killing of Jorge by Sarah's actions that were imminently dangerous and demonstrated a depraved mind without regard for his life. So that's the affidavit, for those of you who are wondering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was looking to see if they'd filed anything because, you know, now that they have this letter in their hands from her, this 58 page letter. And, and before you guys even ask, no, I am not going to read a 58 page letter from Sarah Boone over a live stream. That's just craziness. I'll, I might try to summarize it for you guys. Maybe do some talking points on it at some point <laughs> after I reviewed it. <sighs> Oh, my goodness gracious, but they have not uploaded the document as of yet, from what I can see here. So, I'm going to call it <laughs> pretty, please. I appreciate you guys being with me, being here with me. I hope that you found that I was on top of this case for you guys. I know I'm not always on top of everything. <laughs> it takes me a while. Oh, thank you, Psychic. It takes me a while to get things in order. A um, couple of things coming up. Let's see. Before we get off, let me just talk about some upcoming items that I want. I am interested in here. Oh, if you haven't seen it yesterday, I did the thing on um, Susan Lawrence. That's an interesting case, guys. And if uh, I got like body cam footage and all that good stuff on that stream or that video that I put up. So you should watch it. I think I think that Court TV is going to show that trial. So it'll kind of get you familiar with it if you have not already seen it. Uh, August 16th is when Daryl Brooks, I know you guys are always asking about him. That's his sentencing. That will be the last time we have to see him in court. And then after that, I imagine we're going to see a movie. We're going to see something. I just feel like something's going to happen. He's going to get an interview. Somebody's going to pay to, to pay him to get an interview. Somebody's going to do it. There's just been too much out there. You know, I was looking the other night on uh, Hulu and I was going through the movies and uh, I don't know why my sister likes to watch Lifetime movies. I used to, I don't need more, but so now every time a Lifetime movie comes on, that crap pops up in my feed, like recommended for you. And I was, okay, so they've done all these Lifetime movies on all these trials and all these cases that have been so popular. They did it on the Gabby Petito, they've done it on Murdaugh, they did it on the Vallow case, they didn't do one on Gannon's case, that surprised me, uh, less than not that I've seen, they did it on Chris Watts case, why haven't they done one on this one, I really, I would like to see it, I don't know, how do you guys feel about that, I, I, I would like to see it from the perspective of the investigation side, like we've talked about this before, I don't, I want 
Brooks to be mentioned as he was just the attacker and to keep it strictly about law enforcement and the victims. I think there was a, they could do this very tastefully and because it was such a huge incident. And but I, I do believe, too, though, that there's no way to have a movie about this and not not do something about this trial and how crazy it was. So I could see somebody doing a separate movie on just the trial itself. I, it's crazy. I know. I, I don't want, you know, you'd never want to be disrespectful to the victims, but uh, it's just my thoughts. I, I would watch it. And I know you guys would watch it because you're such fans of this topic. But anyway, hey, if you guys haven't checked out J9 Eve, I am J9 Eve. She is killing it over on her channel right now with that uh, Dalton investigation. Y'all need to go watch some of that stuff. She is cracking me up. Um, that the super mayor of Dalton. Have any of you guys seen it? I know a lot of you guys watch her channel as well as because she was doing a lot on Daryl Brooks too. She did a lot more than I did. So um, go give her some love. She is just she's so funny. You, Mark thinks it's too soon for Walkshaw to have a movie. Yeah, could be. It could be. Yeah, Shonda watched her. She, she is hilarious. Tiff Tiff. Talking about Tiff Tiff. And I don't know all the players in that. I have to go back and watch the first couple of videos. But yeah, she's doing a great job on covering that. Oh, Laura, you went down to the Dalton for a couple of the meetings and said it's out of hand. Laura, you need to. Why don't you showcase that on your channel, girl? You could. That. Have you seen the the views that J9 Eve is getting right now? Yeah, she she annoys me too, y'all. The um the mayor when she starts to talk, she is annoying. And she's oh, she doesn't even speak proper English and it's just oh, she's so she tries to make, you know, just like this attorney in this last case we watched on on the Zion Foster case. That attorney, he tried to make himself sound important. She does the same thing. Let's see what Laura says. Laura says, yeah, I went down there. I've seen the reviews. And the two times I went down there to try and live stream. They wouldn't let me in. The mayor was limiting the amount of people in. She won't even let her own uh, people park in the parking lot. They own that area. They're not her people. They own that that area. They pay taxes. Mark's going off to play slots. All right, Mark. Let me know if you hit anything this weekend. Be good. All right. It's 11, 1 11 in the chat, which is a good time to, to turn it off. So you guys have a blessed weekend. I, I have an idea of something I'm going to put together for you guys. I'm going to see if I can't find all of the pieces where the attorneys are talking about the previous Sarah's previous attorneys are talking about wanting to withdraw from working with her. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a compilation done for you guys. <laughs> that would be so great. <laughs> so we'll see. The problem is, is that I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When you fell asleep? <laughs> oh, my word. I thought it was done for the week. But only one day after her pre-trial conference where her attorney complained about her and she complained about her attorney, Patricia Cashman, the current and eighth attorney on Suitcase Sarah's case, has officially put a motion in to withdraw. All right, show of hands, who wants to take Sarah Boone's case? Who wants her as a client? <laughs> hard, hard, hard pass. One thing here we have to think about. Yes, we all heard what was said in court already. I can play that back if y'all want me to play it after this. But I almost wonder, one thing that a lot of people are not talking about is that 58-page letter that Sarah had for the judge. Now... This is where I give Patricia Cashman credit because the judge told her, look, we really want you to stay on this. This is going to cause a lot of problems if you try to withdraw. We really want you guys to try to work this out. So we're going to give it a little bit more time. I have never experienced anyone like Ms. Cashman. I mean, you're the problem. Certainly not the defense lawyers.
he's kind of leaning towards, look, I know, but you took this case. You knew what you were getting into. You knew she'd had seven attorneys prior to you. So, you know, you've got to give the judge that credit. That's true. Cashman knew what she was getting into. However, what we don't know is what did Sarah write in that 58-page letter? And how will that, that 58-page letter affect the judge's decision as to whether or not he will allow her new attorney to withdraw? In Cashman's formal request to withdraw, the grounds she's stating are the defendant is charged in the above stall cause with second-degree murder. The undersigned counsel was appointed to represent her on February the 9th of 2024. So she's been on this since February. So that's four months, right? Okay. Or a little, just a, yeah, four months. The trial is currently set for October 7th, which will allow new counsel time to prepare for said trial. So she's, she's basically saying, look, I'm not asking you to change the trial date, judge. If you think about this, if we go ahead and look at this now and you get somebody else in here, they're going to have the same amount of time to prepare for trial as I did. She's also stated on here, Florida rule regulating the Florida bar conflict of interest, representing adverse interest. I mean, she's basically stating, look, there's irreconcilable differences. She called me a bitch. <laughs> she didn't say that. But I mean, in all, you know, basically Sarah says she's a mean bully. She didn't say the word bully, but she says she's mean and she needs her to be kind to her. I bet Patricia said, look, if you write one more damn letter to me, I'm out. I just, I really, guys, I want to see what this 58 page letter is. I wasn't going to read it online, but now I'm thinking we need to, we have to. So when are they going to get it on the docket? I don't know. Looking back here at some of these other letters that they have on the docket. <laughs> Let's see how long it took the other letters to, to hit the docket after they received them. Okay, on 327, they posted one of the letters. So, it, it took them five days to get it up. So, she, well, she wrote it on 322, so we don't know how long it took for it to get to him. Now, according to what we saw, oh, yeah, they received it. She actually handed it to the judge that day. Now, there was one on 414. She wrote on 46. And, again, I don't know how long it takes to get to the judge, though. Her handwritten, she actually, the thing that kills me about her letters, you guys, is that she's like, she put, she puts hearts on there. Shout out to my supporters. <laughs> what the, what the, <laughs> that's what she said. And the one that was dated on 4-6. Um, but also she does the SMH shaking my head. Like she does as if she's writing a text. She goes to all this extra effort to make it sound formal in, so, in some areas and then in other areas it's like what huh this is someone who as a, a criminal defendant is not smart all those cogs in that wheel are not working you guys there's something off of course we know that but then the june 21st was hand delivered on june 21st so why is letter 58 not, the 58 page letter, why is that one not up yet? Dad, blast it. I really want to see that letter. So Cashman withdrew on, sent her motion to withdraw in on June, well, it's dated June 10th, I bet. Nope, it's, it's dated June 11th. So, okay, she took two business days. She read that damn letter, y'all. Something is in that letter. And I want to know what it freaking is. That attorney was so close uh, to getting let off the case. I thought she was going to say, well, Judge, I've got to trial every week for the yeah. next six years. <laughs> I'm I'm like, not I'm to up. So that was kind of what I was holding out on was this 58 page letter. I've got some good little parodies I'm putting together for you guys on that. So stay tuned. You know, she had just Sarah did say in court, she's like, I don't want to I don't want to replace her. I just want her to be more nice to me. Sarah, this is what Sarah had said in court. She will change her disposition and her attitude towards me. And it doesn't matter how dumbed down I am to myself to try to coexist with her. Good Lord. I've even come up with a solution to have a pretend judge in interactions with her. So she would try to hopefully to treat me appropriately and professionally, which she does not. But she has a different complaint about eight different lawyers. It seems like the problem is probably with the client, not with the lawyer when you get to number eight. Especially Bankowitz, which we saw her withdraw from just not too long ago. She called him a dud and a buffoon. 
Her seventh attorney withdrew after she, she sent a, non, a number of letters to the court complaining about her ability to talk to the counsel. And then Cashman said at Friday's hearing that she had spent hours with her client, even accepting collect calls, but that Boone had refused to cooperate with her. We all saw that. I mean, 20 plus hours she says she spent with Sarah so far. And Sarah, she's like, I know I walked out, but, you know, just tell her to please, please be nice to me. I've been here for four years and I'm tired of being here and I'm tired of going through all of these attorneys, which are not my fault. Seemingly all of your relationships with counsel have deteriorated. Cashman seemed to acknowledge the potential for this scenario come up here. She said, I can't spend all of my time defending what I'm doing and at the same time be effectively preparing a case for trial. And Cashman suggested the judge either tell Boone to represent herself or offer one last attorney. And the court can only go through so many this so many times with Miss Boone coming to the court and there end up being irreconcilable differences such that the counsel that you have appointed can't move forward. I'm not a bad person because of that. I mean, so uh, we got to wait this out and see when they're going to have, a, a, they're going to have to reschedule a hearing. They're going to have to have it sooner than later for him to acknowledge this. I don't know how long it's going to take for him to acknowledge it. Good gracious of love. Ooh, yeah, deep breath after that. I feel like I need some Tylenol. Well, okay, here we go. The infamous 58 page letter from Sarah Boone to Judge Kranick, which was she promised him and hand delivered to him in his last in their last meeting. Back uh, was it when did they meet last? What day was that? June, a couple of days ago. Last time she was in court. I'm trying to see what it was here. In my notes. Anyway, this is it. Now, look, guys, we, we've all been through her letters before. We know that it's repetitive. We, half of us want to vomit. Half of us can't stop laughing. And half of us can't even stand it. So just bear with me. We're going to take this one page at a time. I'm going to read this. I'm going to try not to throw up while I'm doing it. So just here we go. Oh my God. She's starting with bullet points. Good Lord in heaven. All right. Mm -mm -mm. So as you can see, she's got ongoing five years. Why can't I dot, dot, dot. And here are her bullet points. They need to get this woman a PowerPoint. <laughs> get her access to a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Use my constitutional rights. Am I the only one who cares about the ongoing violation of... ongoing violations. I don't know what that is. Why can't I have a bond? Why can't I have all my medical records? Why can't, did they gave her, did, I thought they gave it them store. Why can't I have all my digital evidence and discovery? Why can't I have all my paperwork, notes, letters, pictures, everything of mine returned by former attorney? Why can't I speak to my investigator? She keeps asking that one. It, it, is there an investigator, guys? Is I'm confused about that because you would have to pay for that. Why can't I have a complete download of my phone? Why can't I have any of my witness list? Well, you know what, Sarah? If you end up uh, representing yourself, honey, you're going to get all this and more. They're going to come in there with all this discovery material for her, and it's going to it's going to be like twenty boxes worth of stuff. And then she's going to write a letter complaining that it's too much. Okay. Why can't I have any of my witness lists? Why can't I give any insight, understanding, clarification, truths about my case, especially in my to my attorney? Why can't I be listened to by anyone, especially my attorney? Why can't I be respected for who I am truly, especially by my attorney, and not by and not be disrespected for the mutated that's right she likes that mutated word mutated malicious murder all the world has falsely incorrectly created and believer and believes me to be why can i be treated fairly lawfully and be protected by the justice system why can i properly rightfully completely defend myself 
Oh, oh, you're going to be given the opportunity. It seems like it. Why can't I see all and know the same as the world, as the world can and does, including my attorney, from all the phenomenal non-permissive amount of at my entire case being available online globally before my trial and most important before I have I've seen it myself. Why doesn't anyone know already about my case? How about my side and everything about everything? Well, Sarah, if you would co cooperate with your attorneys, then eventually you'll go to court and then that's where all that comes out, honey. Why can I be correctly understood that I'm not the problem? <laughs> For reasons I am on. <laughs> what is that? For reasons I am on something. Something appointed by the court attorney number eight. <laughs> See my letter dated 72123. Why can I say what I want and should. But all the world can and say it all wrong and warped. <laughs> She's, this woman doesn't need a trial. She needs a freaking uh, therapist. Okay, really quick. I just had a thought while I was looking at this. At the same time that this was uploaded to um, Orange County's docket, this was done Friday. Was it done Friday? The hearing dates for September have not changed. So this letter hasn't changed anything. And I think poor Patricia is stuck with, with Sarah. Her eighth attorney is going to be who she's stuck with or or if there's not going to be another attorney brought in. I mean, it, it maybe saving the date to go back to Sarah to go, you know what, Sarah, it's all yours. Take it, girl. Go with it. Peace be with you. <laughs> May the force be with you. Oh, now. OK, now we move on to another PowerPoint slide where she says, why won't my attorney dot dot dot? Give me an answer, an honest answer. Why won't my attorney show me everything she says she has and finished reviewing for my case, but withholds from me after I have asked repeatedly for and about. And you know what? I think there's one thing if Sarah's being truthful about anything in this letter, her asking repeatedly is probably the truth. Why won't my attorney give me an answer other than I'm putting this to rest? That's not necessary or I'm not having this conversation with you. <laughs> Why won't my attorney grant me access to anything I ask her for and in and about my case? Why won't my attorney, like the detectives in my case, stop putting words in my mouth? So she's saying it's just like the detective. Y'all need to stop putting words in my mouth. It was not intentional. Why can't my attorney tell me what's going on in my case? It's been well over a hundred days. She is been my attorney and I still do not know ongoing five years. I don't know what she means there. Why can't I answer any of my questions? Why can't my attorney answer any of my questions? Because you have too damn many of them, Sarah. Shut the F up, Sarah. Why can't my attorney ever ask me about any questions? Because she doesn't want to listen to you go on and on and on. How can she supposedly know everything she needs to know from what uh, from what she's been told, heard, read, seen, reassure she's on something side for me, not against for on my side, not against. Sarah, we're all against you at this point, honey. You've made the world hate you. Why can't my attorney have. I already been judged in the court of public opinion. How did that happen? Why have I been referred? Oh, now she's switching up her PowerPoints. Why have I been sentenced by anticipation and condemned before my predicted trial? Because you can't keep your freaking mouth shut. Why does my attorney and all the world think my case is already over? Because you recorded it, you idiot. Your Honor, during our first introduction at my last withdrawal of court appointed attorney number seven, which was Hobson, you stated to me your uninvolvement with any of my letters I write. 
I am still going to write this letter <laughs> as can do it. Lee, they are the world. They are the work. Wait, they are to the world where all my potential jurors and located. Wait, what? As can do it. Lee, they are to the world where all my potential jurors are located. And this is the only way anyone, including yourself, knows to very necessary insight to my continued disadvantages. Oh, so she wants her upcoming jurors to read this letter. <laughs> Hindrances, imp imped impediments, impediments. I am still experiencing on top at the new sp uh, spurring something intentions to write oh god i swear what, looking at her handwriting sometimes i go in and my, my eyes get crossed the race to the pulpit is unfair and it is important to me that you are aware and understand what transpires when the news when the news cameras are off and we are all in between my status hearings so she's basically saying judge is putting on a show for the cameras not not good why do these people go, lash out at the judges knowing that they're gonna or do they not realize the judges have most of the time make the final call as far as how long they're going to be in jail two as so many of the advantage hmm. two as many as so many of the advantageous embezzlers racketeers mindless lemmings and just altogether near people can use their freedom of speech not knowing me in any way other than what's being said by all the other mean people and being said incredibly incorrectly so can i so can i you know what she needs to do she needs to take all this energy and write a book that's what she needs to do of course, this is 58 pages. I guess this is a book. As to the compelling annoyed detectives in my case. The, the detective had to fairly falsely falsify documents and Lowen wore his gun for me to see. I am sure you are familiar with after watching all of my plastered high misconstrued over 30 plus million viewed just on one side interviews. So what, so Sarah's on YouTube. And in which they both repeatedly attempted to feed me their incorrect, incomplete hypothesized opinion by stating to me, everyone has their limits at this seemingly endless point of perpetuality of nonsense and lawlessness still growing. And I very much want to advance to the next level after ongoing five years now. Is this really page four to five? I guess. Okay. At least she's got the sense to start numbering her pages since she has so many of them. A genuinely concerned limit has been reached. Why am I still not included in my case? How much more of my case and self is being added hourly, especially after the letters get loose? Well, why are you writing them if you know they get loose? They get loose to the internet, increasing the mass infection and destruction of my hopes to have a fair trial, anything fair, my side foremost, and wondering now if my attorney drank the punch like everyone else. Oh, okay. It's Jonestown now. It's Sarah Town. After all affor aforementioned reasons and so many more, for this letter to be written, hopefully to deter some of the unfair, one-sided anger pointing, something corruption and malpractice being disrespectful directed at me only by those in the justice system who are trying to deflect the share the sh something and shock from me fearlessly challenging the status quo and it must be so because it's in my face on the computer at the time at the same time on, on my boob tube television what brainwashed ignorant allowers of disbelief conformity and greed trying unsuccessfully to make my life by character assassination seem worse than theirs no two when anyone points their finger one it's impolite <laughs> and two three point back at you 
How many tried to see it? Tried it to see. How many tried it to see? Put the stone down as there will be no casting of anything today, except maybe for the role of my part for all of the pre-conclusion -conclu documentaries and crystal ball real life uh, something of true crime stories of true crime incorrectly formulated from everyone supposedly knowing me and judging me who they think I am what really happened and is going to future to futuristically remember three point back soothsaying is not a real job I don't know about y'all but right now I'm just feeling so attacked by Sarah to sum it up the world's the words of my attorney after I told her to Google me, she states, there's a lot. <laughs> to sum it up in the words of myself, the defendant stated to my attorney after she stated that to me, when I can see how much longer do I have to wait or how many attorneys must there must be withdrawn for me to inquire be included in my case and be included more than the world presently is so okay so let's just break this down because we're we've just got through this page six so sarah is basically saying that we the world um know more about her case than she does we don't sarah we haven't seen all the files not yet we're waiting for trial just like you are and then we'll condemn you this is my case in every aspect. See all my offer mentioned ongoing five year questions. I am still waiting on for answers. Page seven. Also, I want to make it known. I walked out on my attorney in our last meeting due to her unwarranted, uninformative, unprofessional, snotty attitude and her untruthful answer to my questions and beyond. retarded vicious circle we enter every time we meet is a waste of time and I'm saying that in jail with supposed endless hours endless amounts of time how, how she treats me is extremely prejudiced hostile and unconcerned I don't think she proofreads these I really don't she should maybe see if one of her cellmates will proofread for her. She is very frustrating. One, to balk or defeat in any endeavor. Two, to induce feelings of insecurity, discouragement, or dissatisfaction. Or three, bring to bring to nothing. It doesn't make sense what she's saying. Basically, that's saying exactly what they were saying on court TV is that these attorneys are telling her, this is what's up. This is what's going to happen, Sarah. And she just doesn't want to believe it. So because of that, she feels like they're being disrespectful. I mean, does she want to be patted on the back and go, Sarah, we're going to get out of this. And you know what? You're going to go free one day. You want to be lied? She wants to be lied to. So much I presented my solution in order to coexist with and work together in a hopeful, progressive, positive, and appropriate manner. I added pretend judge to our interactions so she could calm down and ease up on her condescension, offensive demeanor, and obvious prejudgment. She seems like everyone else, not to remember I am innocent until a judged, a judged otherwise. She treats me as if I am not. She's coming in with the real life stuff to you. And she and you don't want to hear it, Sarah. Page 8. After my introduction and explanation for with pretend judge in the room or on the phone, I'm trying to help her understand how she is making herself extremely unwelcoming. When in front of a real judge and in the courtroom is how she should treat me, her client, at all times. I should not have to invent pretend judge in order to be and am not at all wrong for wanting to be respected, no matter the outcome. 
I am innocent until adjudged otherwise. My attorney, everyone's, should be fair, unbiased, trustworthy, honest, supportive, informative, protective, automatically and effortlessly. I should feel secure, highly confident, proud in her, representing my life. I do not. And I've said to her many times regarding how oh, monumental disbelief in me and my case, which I believe cont contributes greatly to her something attitude. Emical, ab, emical, ab, uh, inimical ab, attitude towards me. I'm hoping by these le this letter she will pick up the word of the sword of justice. Oh, wait. I'm hoping by <laughs> this letter she will pick up the sword of injustice and fight alongside, not against me. And so many unmotivated, overwhelmed, weak attorneys prior who bowed out ungracefully and crept away from the battlefield unsuccessfully. Oh, she's so dramatic. Page nine. My case equals bizarre, equals unknown, equals different, equals ignorance, equals misunderstood, equals unfair. This does not mean my case can't, <clears throat> excuse me, can't equal success. And in many ways, and in more ways than one. While everyone continues to ring their bells of malevolence, I am ringing mine of hope, honor, plausibility, boldness, period, listen, period. I am not a murderer. The justice system should equal fair, faith, truth, trust, respect, innocence, until and if a judge otherwise. Three point blank. Three point. I would say I would think that would be three point blank, but three point balk. I don't know. Back three point back. I don't know. Sarah Boone, and again she leaves us a little heart emoji. Confused cat meme. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Yes. Period. Thank you. Period. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay, that was, no, I don't, what is this? One. Okay, so she's, she, oh, we're going to break down here. All of her visits with her attorney, I guess. So this is page one, June 4th of 2024, video visit, 12 minutes. In addition to my previous letter intended for hand delivery on June 7th, 2024, at my status hearing today, my attorney made a video visit to go over everything I've been asked for her for and have also sent to her personally in two letters 520 and 525 all on the public videos visitation box where on both sides of me less than five inches away from my visit other inmates were having their visits also okay I've explained to my attorney numerous times previously in writing and verbally that despite the noise level I do not in any way feel comfortable having in-depth private meetings regardless my entire criminal case regarding my entire entire criminal case on the visitation box where there is no privacy whatsoever and held in an open bay dorm with more than 62 other interested all ears inmates oh yeah they're all it's all about you sarah i cannot fully participate if at all from the entire dorm officer included trying to participate also in my case as always, my attorney did not listen or care after I repeatedly tried to remind her of my page two unsecure environment backing at me. Wait, let me page two equals page 12. Okay. Unsecure environment barking at me. I can listen or not still going over speaking and not at all allowing me to respond. After repeating to her over and over and over, while she's beginning to speak louder and over me still to please schedule an in-person meeting where all can be discussed further privately with no success of being heard, I disconnected the visit telephonically. She uncooperatively, she is, she uncooperatively, 
she is impossible. See previous letter or ask for her for a copy of the two I sent her. Oh, yes, please let us see those. I was trying to remedy or lessen before sending this to you, Your Honor, and not having to include you. Now, it's a race to the pulpit. My question, please, who acts like that and still be able to call themselves professional? The visitation box is primarily for family and friends to connect. And if a must from an attorney, reminders, notices, quick questions, not high-level confidential case information, she, like other former attorneys who always, always, always blame their dysfunctions on me, said, you don't like the answers I give you. What answers, Sarah said. See page one, two, and three. Um, and now we're on page three. I am not the problem, except that I want and I should be treated fairly. Okay, now notice here she's gone into all caps, so she's getting highly agitated. Just wanted to point that out. With respect, acting more professional than the paid. I've been doing this forever. Wait, I've been doing this for over, she put 40 years, but I think she meant for, oh yeah, that's what the attorney said. I've been doing this over for, 40, for over 40 years, professional. After so long, and in all the experience, common courtesy, customer service. Oh, she wants customer service. Can I please see a manager? And listen, skills listening skills should have been acquired y'all that just made me think of something do you really think that like while sarah's talking to her attorney she's like um i want to talk to your boss who leads your firm i want to talk to the, the owner of the firm all attorneys do you remember why you even wanted to be one remind yourself oh she kind of sounds like Letitia stout there no one listens, and it works in everyone's favor but mine, that I am a murderer, stuck in jail so they can pin on me. They're uninterested, unmotivated, hopeless. They're going to be leave me over her haughty attitude. And if if y'all are just listening and not looking at the at the screen, please know I'm just reading what's in front of me. I'm not saying it makes sense. It's written by Sarah, okay? I'm not wrong for not thinking less of myself because everyone else has and does this present attorney foremost. The justice system expects me and other inmates, aka clients, to accept its something bar, nonchalant, subpar, I think she meant subpar, nonchalant, hip hip hypocritical, next on the list attorneys they keep aimlessly throwing darts for and Malappointing, praying they don't withdraw. Page four. Okay, big caps, couple of underlines here. I have not fired any attorneys appointed in my case. From me, expecting the highest equal standards possible for wanting the absolute best outcome in my preposterous mismanaged case and representing myself is not an option oh really okay let's listen to this and representing myself is not an option as both judges have now threatened me with from the, being outspoken and, in, and intelligent in all observation of the ongoing abuse i am and i have experienced i have no experiences from it always being the same blame boone oh we should get her a t-shirt that says that. Blame Boone. And then on the back it says, Suitcase Sarah. I refuse to be moved in wanting respect. No matter who everyone thinks I am. Clarity, conclusion, honesty, and professionalism. And another great reason not to have my case meetings on the public visitation box is my personal confidential inmate information, such as my visitation list with names, etc., my interactions with inmates and officers. Page five. What I eat, when, and my personal jail calls also being thrown online for what? To hate me more or to try to get others to because I don't eat breakfast or because I know some Latin, have short hair, my penmanship is nice. 
I disagree with that one. Or because I'm not getting fat and sleeping all day, but rather fully applying myself, fighting still, making everyone upset from not having to false fabricate, narrate, splice, edit. The world apparently knows all. Once again, she's saying out loud that she's better than everyone else. And she, she excels at everything she does. What's next? How many times I go to the bathroom and what function I perform? Yeah, well, you could keep that. We don't need that, Sarah. No one knows anything, nor seems to want to, to from being comfortable in their corruption and sitting to be on top with ratings, website, web hits, and money. My case details, if anyone forgot, and if you think about it, all that keeps getting plastered and plagiarized, posted and poked. Mm, something fun at about me. It's all in my favor. Pro proving myself right about all mindless lemmings shut-ins, the justice system, advantageous abusing and pro profiting from everything in my case before my trial and before I've seen. Please be sure to read my attachment for something rule. It's a thing. Restricted, restrict, restricting disclosure. Am I the only one who thinks of these things? Now we're on page six, which is actually page 16. When can I win in anything? It's coming. I am not the problem. And if anyone were to slip on my slides and have to experience, tolerate, deal with any, any, any of what I have and am, would bravely be doing the same. Don't knock it till you try it. Three point back again. I don't. What is, is that? I don't know what three point. I've never heard that expression. Race to the pulpit. Again, always Sarah Boone. Okay. Now, if she just wrote out some statutes here and that's all this is, we're not reading it. Page 17 says, West Florida statutes annotated, annotated Florida Rules of Criminal Procedure. And that's exactly what she's done. She's written these out. Two, three. Oh, let's see. She highlighted H. Whether there has been any electronic surveillance, including wiretapping of the premises of the defendant or of the conversations to which the defendant was a part, a party and any documents relating thereto. Four, five, defendant's obligation. If a defendant elects to participate in discovery, either through filing the appropriate notice or by participating in any discovery process, including the taking of a discovery de deposition, the following disclosures shall be made. Within 15 days after receipt by the defendant, all the discovery exhibit furnished by the prosecutor pursuant to subdivision blah 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 of this rule the defendant shall furnish to the prosecution a written list of the names and addresses of all witnesses whom the defendant expects to call as a witness at the trial or hearing and it just goes on and on so she's like just one this is what's not being done i guess again i'm not going to read these this is That stops at page 10. So there's well, almost almost 10 pages of that. And that now we're on page 27. Okay, I'm sorry, but for some reason, this page is not numbered or it was cut off when it was scanned. And it just picks up in the middle of anywhere. But she's still writing the laws. Okay, now she, oh, Lord have mercy. She has written the American Declaration of Independence, written in, 19, in 1776. I can imagine her standing up there with her dang Pledge of Allegiance, got her hand on her heart while she's writing all this. So page 28, 
And then she writes down the Florida Constitution 2024. We, the people of the state of Florida, be grateful to Almighty God for want our Constitution liberty in order to secure its benefits, per perfect our government. What is she trying to do? I, I just don't understand. Okay, now we start over with another number one. So I don't know what this is. This is these are just, these are basically just Sarah's notes. I think at this point, which this document of this document we're on page twenty nine now, and she writes the definition of a client. Then she writes down attorney client privilege. Then she defines zealous advocacy. Then she on page three of this, she defines attorney misconduct. Page four. Then she defines duress. Then she defines habeas corpus, habeas corpus. Uh, then she, def she defines informal consent. Then she defines legal ethics. Then she defines equal protection of the law. Page 36. Then she defines abuse of process. So she feels like all this is happening to her, I guess. Page 38. And she defines interrogation, examination of a suspect, uh, custodial interrogation, excited utterance. Okay, now we have. Okay, this is interesting. On this page is the map of the United States. And it says. Publicity, exploitation, and saturation. Oh, wait. She's even included North and South America. Oh, she got the whole world on here. She included the whole world. Publicity, exploitation, and saturation. United Saps, on page one, to date each star is a state where I have received correspondence via mail or message regarding my current criminal case. Oh, now this is exciting. Hang on a minute, y'all. Page two. Our world map page, page two. To date each star is a content continent where I have received correspondence via mail or message regarding my criminal case. And the number grows daily. Most all letter messages are available for review and understanding of the impact of my case details being made readily available on the global internet created wrongfully ignorance, hate, and massive prejudgment before my trial. I, the defendant in my case, have not yet ongoing have not yet ongoing five years fully reviewed or even seen all of the all of my case details everyone in the world has already had the opportunity to do so themselves no we haven't the difference is Sarah most people don't record their crimes like you did the con the continuation of the obvious ex exploitation allows the world to keep pressing their incorrect presumed unfair, Theories, ideas, accusations, forcibly insinuating I committed criminal acts. Well, come on now, Sarah. Watch my channel. In all fairness, honey. I mean, I didn't say that you were this, you know, mastermind. I said you were just stupid and did something stupid. And it resulted in this man losing his life. So let's just, let's just make the record correct there, okay? All right, back to the letter. My president attorney said it is not necessary to receive a court order I've been trying to obtain to download my case information to apply from the OCC, OCCD tablets. My former attorneys are withholding some of my case contents I have supplied to them and which have been deemed 
lost. Many other items have been returned, not to myself, but to the next attorney, which have been unable to locate to date. I am missing innumerable case items, which I continuously request to be returned or obtained without success. Page 44. Invasion of Privacy, Supreme Court, comma, wrongful conduct. And um, here she wants to offer more definitions of these different words. And I'm going to read the words that she's defining. I'm not going to read the definitions to each. Uh, this is like a freaking glossary. Okay. Appropriation, intrusion, public disclosure of private felt facts, false light in the public eye, defame, invasion of privacy, false light. Okay. And now she goes back to writing her thoughts. And we're on page 46. My personal individual criminal case is being advantageously exploited and abused from all my significant life-saving suppressibly suppressible case details. Evidence proof being illegally obtained by coercion, trickery, duress, confusion, and without my permission in any form written or verbal to anyone that broadcasted, distributed, hand-delivered to the entire planet States, countries, continents, containing all of my potential jurors, causing irreparable, erroneous falseness, greatly tainting my jury pool altogether by forcibly attributing heavily <clears throat> influenced, incorrect, inappropriate motives, theories, and ideas. God, somebody needs to teach this one more at a period. Okay. This obvious exploitation and invasion of my privacy is creating unnecessary unlawful oppression depleting all of my into something and in, in depleting all of my can y'all tell what word that is entitled opportunities to be given a fair proper successful conclusion of my case not everybody gets a successful conclusion at least not in their own not not, not in your eyes she's really not I mean, I don't know why she keeps saying successful conclusion. A misprejudgment has already been made unfairly against me from the undeniable violation of my constitutional rights and due process of law as a result of my entire case and personal life being publicized globally before my rightful trial, which lawfully, ethically should be without disadvantage and free from all Par uh, par partials, deceitfulness, um, I can't, partiality, partiality, deceitfulness, and dishonesty made from said evident exploitation. Oh, okay. So here she's, she's writing down her, um, she, this is not like a thesis or something. We're on page 47 and she says, definition, <clears throat> all of my information, my definitions, definitions were collected from, and then she puts in here the Bovier Library. Law Library, Law Library, the Marion Webster's Dictionary, and Smart Communication Tablet. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're going into more definitions. Who does this? Who thinks that the judge wants to sit here and look at this? Who thinks that this isn't a slap in everyone's face who's trying to do their job in this case? Oh, good Lord. Maybe she's going for insanity plea. I don't know. Okay, so here's the definitions, or here's the words that she's defined. But again, I'm not reading the definition. I'm just reading the words. Exploit, exploitation, abuse, significant, suppress, illegal, coerce, trickery, confusion, broadcast, distribute, deliver, irreparable, erroneous, uh, what's that? Falseness. False. Yeah, it says falseness. Taint, force, influence, incorrect, inappropriate, motive, invade, privacy, oppression, deplete, 
entire fair proper successfully prejudgment unfair undeniable but by violate constitutional rights liberty rights privilege or positive rights procedural right due process procedural due process substantive due process publicize rightful lawful ethical disadvantage partial partiality deceitful dishonesty evidence Coerce or co coercion. Freedom of Information Act. That's the key one, Sarah. And that concludes it with pay that's she ends uh, the letter at page 58 with the definition of Freedom of Information Act. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. The Sarah Boone letter dated June 7th of 2024, hand delivered in court to the Honorable Judge Michael Trainick. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Trainick. So, um, what'll happen? I don't know. I don't see the judge looking at this and making any. Di I mean, I, I don't know. I can they make her? Can they make her defend herself if she can't find any anybody? Uh, I'm going to go watch some law stuff now because I'm just frustrated with this letter. Well, I'll call it here. Thank you all for being with me here today as I read this letter. How long have we been on? God, please tell me I was recording that. Yes, I was. Okay, good. Oof. Okay, it only took me 45 minutes. That's not too bad, huh? That's not that bad. Of course, you got to remember, there's a lot of stuff we didn't read. We will revisit more. I've got a, I want to put out there, I've got, I want to talk about her husband's interrogation. We want to talk about her neighbor's, in, or not interrogation, but interview. I want to talk about her neighbor's interview. Um, and they all, there's also an interview of her, Jorge, or, I'm sorry, George's brother. I think it's just those three left that I want to talk about next. So stay tuned and y'all have a blessed day.